Good morning. Well, it must be morning somewhere. Anyway, let me begin by explaining my talk's title and its trio of subtitles. The main title was appropriated from a 1942 Nancy Drew novel about buried treasure. It nicely describes my attempt to find several specific copyrighted maps in the U U.S. Library of Congress. The maps were registered for copyright between 1916 and 1929 by an inventor and map publisher who submitted so-called deposit copies with each copyright application. I know this because the maps are listed in the catalog of copyright entries published each month by the Copyright Office, which is part of the Library of Congress. My naive assumption that the maps could readily be found in our national map collection is based on the Copyright Act of 1909, which required submission of two deposit copies of any map registered for copyright. One copy was kept as a referent for assessing the originality of later submissions or for fending off infringement. And a second copy was intended to enrich the collection at the Library of Congress. Although copyright law authority, Arthur William Weil, considered this a purely secondary objective, enriching the collection could be important to map historians like me, who trustingly presumed that the LAC would have a complete set of deposit copies. My quest led to the conclusion that the maps went missing because whoever processed the applications treated most of them not as maps, but as pamphlets. Hence the term pamphlet curse in my title. This particular quest relates to a book on which I'm working. Its title, Clock and Compass, reflects two different map series designed for wayfinding and rural areas without street addresses based on house numbers. Clock system maps were devised by John Byron Plato, an inventor born in 1876. He was perhaps the most significant individual in my 2017 book, Patents and Cartographic Inventions. Although Plato is a minor figure in map history, his invention gave farmers what he described as a real house number and address just as city people have. Plato not only patented his invention, but he published clock system maps for 14 counties in New York and one in Pennsylvania. His patent issued in July, 1915, was based on the 12 hours of a clock face, which provided 12 spokes that could be combined with concentric circles spaced a mile apart to divide the district around a locally important business center into what he called blocks. Within each block, farmsteads and other noteworthy destinations were assigned a unique letter or number. Each county had perhaps a dozen locally noteworthy business centers separated by trade area boundaries. A rural address consisted of the name of the business center, the hour and mile number of the block, and the letter or number pinpointing a specific farmstead within the block. The system included a so-called rural directory in which an alphabetical list of names linked individual farmers to locations on the map. Another list, sorted by address, as in the crisscross section of a city directory, facilitated a search for farmers in the immediate vicinity. Plato registered his first copyright in late 1916 for a rural directory and map of Fort Collins, Colorado, roughly 50 miles from his farm in Semper, Colorado, just north of Denver. He registered later copyrights between 1919 and 1929 when he lived in Ithaca, New York, where he published clock system maps of various New York towns and counties. The second noun in my book's title refers to the compass system maps published between 1936 and 1940 by an Ithaca firm that adopted a modified version of Plato's spokes and circles address. As the name implies, the compass system divided the district into eight sectors based on the cardinal and subcardinal divisions, north, northeast, east, southeast, and so forth. Plato was not involved with this new firm, which had a slightly larger staff and eventually mapped all or part of 31 New York counties. Patent infringement was not an issue because Plato's patent had expired in 1932. Copyright was also not an issue because the compass system cartographers recompiled the maps and directories. 
Their effort is important because they validated Plato's notion that a map-based rural address was worthwhile. This slide illustrates the format of a clock system or compass, compass system product. Typically, a folded map was stapled to its companion rural a directory or inserted in a pocket at the back. The trim size was nine by 12 inches, a bit larger than a letter size sheet of paper. And the booklet usually included 32 or 40 numbered pages of directory listings and advertising. Here's the corresponding entry in the copyrights catalog. Note the copyright registration number is preceded by the letters AA, which reflects its assignment to the section that included pamphlets and minor printed publications. This was the largest section of the monthly listing. Before 1928, registration numbers for this section had only a single A. By contrast, here is an entry with the registration number preceded by the letter F, which reflects its assignment to class F maps. This was a separate and smaller section of the monthly listing. This table summarizes the 30 copyrights registered by Plato or his company. Most of the maps covered an entire county, but several covered just one town. In 1919 and 1920, Plato published eight maps for one or a pair of towns in Tompkins County, which includes Ithaca. All but one of the town maps were classified as pamphlets because the map occupied just a page or two in its rural directory. For seven counties, he registered separate copyrights for the map and its associated directory. In 1924, he published a map and directory covering all of Tompkins County, but failed to copyright it. By the mid 1920s, he had become notable lax about registering copyrights. Perhaps he thought his patent was sufficient to ward off theft of his intellectual property. Eager to explore this plausible cache of 30 items, I was stunned by the substantial discrepancy between the holdings of the library's geography and map division and the 30 maps and rural directories that Plato had registered as reported in the copyrights catalog. I would call this discrepancy very substantial insofar as the library's online catalog listed only two clock system maps. And oddly, only one of these was also listed in the copyrights catalog. It covers an area north of Denver and was possibly created in collaboration with Denver-based map publisher, George Clayson, who had registered the copyright in 1916. Consequently, it was not on my list of 30 maps. Although Clayson ignored Plato in both the map and its registration, its clock system roots are readily apparent in its title and geographic framework. Its unfinished look suggests that Clayson had lost interest in the project, but wanted to protect his intellectual property nonetheless. That the lower portion is missing probably reflects a past practice in the maps division of clipping off and discarding less relevant parts of some maps. By contrast, the second example apparently never, I repeat, never passed through the Copyright Office and is not to be found in the Copyrights Catalog because Plato never registered the copyright. As I noted, he had become quite lax in the mid 1920s. Intriguingly, the library's copy of the clock system map of Onondaga County, New York, published in 1927, is in the maps, uh, is in the map division's collection only because according to stamps at the bottom, it was donated by Charles B. Peterson III in 1992. Although the division has the map, its associated rural directory was somehow lost. Known as puzzling is, uh, known as puzzling, the division's catalog holdings apparently lack even one map copyrighted by the Compass System cartographers who restarted Plato's project in 1936. Although the copyrights catalog confirms that Plato's Ithaca successors were highly conscientious in registering copyrights, their diligence did little to enrich the geography map division. Apparently only one of the 30 maps on my list is known to be, is, is known to be in the map division. And it is for Erie County, Pennsylvania, the only area outside New York state mapped by Plato when he was based in Ithaca. 
I know that the other 29 items are missing because map division staff conscientiously searched the so-called title collection, uh, which includes over 1 million maps that have not been cataloged. Searching the title collection is comparatively straightforward because it was organized by region in accord with a system devised by Philip Lee Phillips, who, who set up what became the Geography and Map Division. Catalog <clears throat> cataloging improved after 1969, when the division began in um, entering new materials in uh, the MARC database. The acronym stands for Machine Readable Cataloging. Before 1969, deposit copies, if kept at all, were placed in the uncatalogued title collection. I suspect that the 22 items with an A or AA registration number indicating a pamphlet might never have reached the Geography and Map Division, even though their booklet titles or a simple I know it when I see it strategy would have flagged them as maps. Why no one bothered to separate these maps from the directory is a mystery. And what are the other eight? Shouldn't their class F status have earned them assignment to the division's title collection? Or were they deemed too quotidian for the national map collection? An explanation of how and why these maps went missing might lie in two respected works on US copyright law and procedures. Wiles American Copyright Law, published eight years after the momentous Copyright Act of 1909, noted that Congress had empowered the librarian of Congress to determine what books and other articles shall be transferred to the permanent art collections. With appropriate notice, material not considered desirable or useful to preserve in the permanent files of the Copyright Office could be destroyed. Another expert, Richard Rogers Boker, in his 1912 textbook, Copyright, Its History and Its Law, described the ritual treatment of deposit copies, which were placed on the table for inspection by library officials who would collectively decide which books are desired for the Library of Congress. Although Boker did not describe a similar strategy for screening maps, he opined that the new provision for the destruction of useless material happily prevents the continuing storage of such material to an indefinite future. Happily prevents the continuing storage of such material to an indefinite future. Mm. At the risk of quoting these experts out of context, it's apparent that senior library staff could not only choose material they deem worth preserving, but also call the collection as space or perceived relevance might dictate. It's a pity that these bureaucrats were apparently too busy to pay attention to Plato's argument that the clock system, that the, that the clock system map gave farmers a real address like city residents. In the process, they sacrificed to the waste bin or the incinerator several dozen artifacts now known to be useful to genealogical researchers interested in their ancestors' neighborhoods, as well as significant agricultural historians and historical geographers curious about bygone rural landscapes, who valued by map collectors with an appreciation of cartographic ephemera. Special Collections of Cornell University has an ostensibly complete set of maps um, uh, that, that Plato published in New York, including those for which he had not registered a copyright. Moreover, several local historical societies and museums, municipal libraries have clock and compass artifacts relevant to their locality. Thank you.